Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Triton Talk webinar this morning from the West Coast. I hope everyone's doing well. My name is Kristen. I'm the Special Events Coordinator for the Office of Admissions. Um, before we begin, just wanted to go over a few things. This session is being recorded, so please don't share any personal information in the Q&A feature. You can also go back on our YouTube channel and rewatch it at a later time if you'd like. You can see on the bottom of your screen that there's a Q&A feature. We have people here today who will be answering your questions. Um, they will type answers to your questions and we'll also ask some questions out loud. Um, so feel free throughout the presentation to ask all and any of your questions. Um, please, again, just a reminder, don't share any personal information. You can sit, submit your questions anonymously. And there's many of you in here, which is very exciting. So we'll try to get through as many questions as we can. So now I'd like to introduce our panelists. Um, they're undergraduate students here at UC San Diego, and they're going to be able to answer all of your questions about student life and the student experience. So let's go ahead and have the panelists introduce themselves with their first name, their hometown, their college, their major, and any minors that they may have. And let's go ahead and start with Rocco. Hello, my name is Rocco. Uh, I'm, my hometown is Riverside, California. I'm currently a double major, aerospace engineering and astrophysics. So that's code for big nerd. Um, I, no minors though, uh, but two double majors. And then my participation on campus, besides being a campus ambassador, I'm also the vice president for the club baseball team. I was involved in, a, in an aerospace organization sending a liquid propelled rocket into space. Uh, so that was a lot of fun to be involved in. And then I also was about to get involved in research, developing a telescope for an observatory in Chile. Unfortunately, though, campus shut down and wasn't able to do that. But I am looking forward to starting up that project when I get back. Thank you, Rocco. Let's go ahead and go with Liz. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Liz. I'm originally from Newtown, Pennsylvania, so I'm calling in from the East Coast today. Uh, I'm in Eleanor Roosevelt College, majoring in human developmental science with a minor in biological anthropology, and I'm also on a pre-health track. So if you have any questions about like pre-med, pre-nursing, all that good stuff, I can help with that. Wonderful. Thanks, Liz. Let's go ahead and go with Jalen next. Hello, everyone. My name is Jalen. I am in Eleanor Roosevelt College. Uh, I am a double major in business psychology and political science law. And I recently tacked on a Korean studies minor. So I'm gonna be super, super busy. Um, and I am also from the East Coast. I'm from Manassas Park, Virginia, which is about 20 minutes outside of DC for those who do not know. Uh, so I'm also calling in from the East Coast. Wonderful, thanks. And Diane. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Diane. My pronouns are she, her, hers. My hometown is Fremont, California, if anyone's familiar with where that's at. And I'm also actually a recent graduate. Um, I was a human biology major, psychology minor in sixth college, and I was also a transfer student, if there's any transfer students in um, this webinar today. Thanks, Diane. So just a reminder, please, please, please submit your questions in the Q&A feature. We would love to answer those for you. Um, I would like to ask the first question, why did you pick UC San Diego? Um, let's go ahead and start with Rocco. So for me, uh, I was pretty lucky. I knew I wanted to do engineering, um, kind of like right out of high school. I know a lot of people like, they don't usually kind of like know their college major and that's okay, but I had an idea. So when I was looking for uh, my universities to apply to. I was looking at a lot of like engineering specific ones. Uh, however, when I found UCSD, I realized like what really attracted me to UC San Diego was the fact that it wasn't just an engineering school. Uh, like, yeah, I had like all the strength of the engineering department that I wanted and what I was looking for in a university, but it also had a lot of other departments. And like there's 30,000 undergraduates on campus and that's 30,000 different people that I could meet and I have different stories studying different things that come from way different backgrounds than me. And I realized there's a lot that you can learn outside of the classroom. So not only was it good for my particular interests, but also it allowed me to double major. Uh, some of the other schools I was looking for, maybe they're strong in engineering, but then like they're not really strong in anything else. But here I'm able to do astrophysics as well. Uh, and it's just really appealing because like you meet a lot of interesting people. Like in my first year, like all three of my roommates were studying completely different things. 
uh, and I was able to learn a lot. So that's what really attracted me about UC, UC San Diego, just like all that it has to offer. Um, plus it's in a really nice location as well. Thanks Rocco. Liz? Yeah, so unlike Rocco, I had no idea what I wanted to do going into college. I knew I wanted to do something kind of sciencey, but that was about it. And I knew I didn't want to go to school in Pennsylvania. Those were my two criteria as far as colleges go. But when I went to tour at UC San Diego, I was really like impressed with the amount of options that were in front of me. So I didn't have to know what I wanted to do because there was all these different things laid out like, oh, like if you want to do this, you can do this. My tour guide, I asked a thousand questions because I had already been accepted at the time of my tour. I was like, can I do this or this? And how, how would I get into this? Because I wasn't accepted into that. And it was super helpful. And then I went and I changed my major, I think three times before I even got to school. Uh, Cause I was just like messing around with online uh, four year plans to see what I might like. Uh, so that's probably my favorite thing about UC San Diego is just how much variety there is. So you don't have to be set in what you wanna do. It is really a place where you can grow not only as a student, but as a person. So that was definitely the driving force behind my choice. Great, thanks Liz. Jalen? Um, so my reason is kind of similar to Liz's. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do going into college and like it honestly just shows like what I'm majoring and minoring. Like I didn't know if I wanted to do business, psychology, political science, if I wanted to learn a language. And so it was just really, really confusing and hard to kind of find a school that was like a good fit for me what I possibly, possibly wanted to pursue. And so I think that's one of the reasons why I liked UCSD, just because I knew that it had an overall good um, education programs across the board. Uh, and then also another driving factor was it wasn't in the East Coast. Um, and when I went to campus, it kind of just, it felt very homish. Like I felt like I could definitely see myself being here for the next four years. And so I think that was also like a really, really, really big factor for me, because I just felt like I could be comfortable there. And I can like envision myself going to the school and being on the campus. So. Great, thank you. Diane. Yeah, so for myself coming in as a transfer student, something that was really, really important to me was having this sense of community on campus. Um, so I, when I actually visited the campus, I felt like at home. And it sounds kind of weird to say that too. Well, Jalen said that as well, but like it felt very homey. And I felt like it was a place that I could be comfortable in and somewhere that I could belong. And I feel like there's plenty of opportunities to um, that are out there for you, even if you come in as a transfer student. Um, and it, you know, really, because I felt like it was a place that I could belong in, I really wanted to be there. Um, and I feel like the people also are really nice people. And when you ask a student what they like about campus, the responses aren't like, oh, I like the grass or I like the architecture. And they, they might, but it's uh, most of the time, I feel like a lot of students really do enjoy, you know, the opportunities that UC San Diego offers. So that's what really, um, you know, helped me decide that this is a school I really wanted to attend. Great. Well, thanks for sharing, everybody. Um, the next question we have here from one of our attendees is, what adjectives would you use to describe students at UC San Diego? Let's go ahead and give this question to Rocco. Uh, to describe the students at UC San Diego, I'd probably say, uh, vibrant because I noticed like a lot of the people I meet are just so full of energy uh, in whatever fields that they are uh, interested in and then another one would be either like opportunistic or determined something like that like they're always looking for uh, ways to expand like you know like looking for the next opportunity and they're also very determined and focused on that um, path so that's how I describe them vibrant opportunistic and determined. Thank you Rafael. This next question is for Liz. Um, so can you explain what the pre-med track entails and kind of what your experience is like? Yeah, so the biggest piece of advice I can probably offer going in to applying to school, something that I didn't know, is that you can be any major you want and still be on a pre-med track. A lot of people get like pigeonholed in this idea that if they don't get accepted as a biology major, then they have to like give up on their pre-med dreams. If you go online for uh, UC San Diego specifically, there will be a list of courses that they recommend you take um, in order to fulfill requirements. Obviously, like different 
medical schools have different requirements, but they all follow a similar path. So you have the one year of biology, one year of chemistry, one year of organic chemistry, all of these with labs, um, one year of physics, and then um, they recommend like upper division biology, uh, all those sciencey classes, also like English composition, knowing how to write well, um, which is where it's kind of fun. If you don't want to be a biology major, you can kind of like mix and match. Like if you want to do English, that looks good because that you get that set, um, skill set as well. Um, and also just as far as the like pre-med environment at UC San Diego, I was really scared going into it because I didn't know, I'd heard like all this stuff about pre-meds and how they were like super competitive and they were really cutthroat and they like were all trying to like fight over each other to get to the top. And that was the exact opposite of my experience. Everyone is super uh, collaborative. They all wanna work together. I'm in a bunch of different study groups. You meet pre-meds all the time and it's how you like bond. Like you're like, oh, I'm a pre-med, like you're a pre-med, friends. So it's definitely a really good environment if that's something you want to do. Um, Pre-health anything, there's a bunch of different um, organizations on campus for a bunch of different uh, specialties. So if you want to do like physical therapy, if you want to do nursing, if you want to do um, pharmacy, I almost forgot that word. Um, there's tons of opportunities and I definitely recommend this. I recommend you see San Diego if you're interested in the health fields. Thanks, Liz. That was a great answer. This next question is for Jalen. How do you balance your coursework and social life? Um, for me, it's more along the lines of like planning out everything. So I both uh, work two jobs and then I also have uh, either four to five classes. And usually I try to like, I'm a person that likes to do everything all at once. So I'll either have all my classes in the beginning of the day or, um, and then after that I'll have work. And then I leave like all the time after that, say like it's like four or five hours. And I leave that for either like social clubs or hang out with my friends. And in terms of like homework, I have like a system I do where like if I have a break in between classes, I'll do it then. Or um, from like Monday to Thursday, I'll, prior I, I'll prioritize doing my homework and like any, any work I need to do for classes. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's just like me chilling out. So yeah, that's basically how I like kind of balance everything out. That's great, thank you. Okay, this next question is for Diane. What's the best advice for transfer students applying this fall? Ooh, that is an excellent question. Um, so my best advice would be to really think about the experiences that you've had um, whether that be at community college or wherever else you're um, transferring from and really try to you know ex when you think about those experiences try to showcase that on your application um, because we do like to see students who are you know well-rounded at uc san diego so it's about the things that you've contributed to the things that you've been passionate about and things that you do outside of being you know like outside of academics um so my biggest piece of advice for students that are currently you know you know doing the application process right now as a transfer student um, is to think about your experiences and really showcase it. Thanks, Diane. Okay, the next question we have here is, can you describe the class environment and average class size? Let's go ahead and give that question to Rocco. So for the classes, it varies. Um, so your like depending if you're in like a lower division general education class that let's say everyone needs to take like I don't know like an econ one or something uh, then you're gonna have a bigger class uh, the largest class I was ever in uh, I think was like 250 students I was like I think COGS one like a cognitive science just GE uh, but then the smallest class that I've been in I had language classes where there was four of us so it really depends on kind of like what the class is um, for like I could speak from the engineering and physics departments it's roughly um, 30 to 40 students in each physics class and then roughly like 60 students for the engineering ones uh, and that's in the lower division ones as you move into upper divisions like I said it gets smaller and smaller um, so class size in my opinion hasn't been too much of an issue because there's also like uh, TAs who lead discussion sections and who go over any material uh, and are able to answer any questions that you might have so getting help and reaching out is always really accessible um, and then as far as the classroom environment, the professors really do care about like 
their students. Uh, the classes aren't led by TAs. It's always led by a professor. And I know that's a big thing that some people uh, like to look for. So, you know, that it is someone who has like a PhD in that department. They, they know what they're doing. Um, so you're going to get like the best possible instruction. And then they're always approachable. There's a lot of ways, like there's a, a program where you can uh, reach out to your professor and get to know them better. Uh, it's called like dinner with the prof or coffee with the professor. Uh, those help you like develop other like professional relationships outside of the classroom as well, you know, because like, you're going to need these people for letters of rec, research opportunities, uh, and it creates a really like positive professor student relationship uh, through the university. Does that answer the question? Yeah. I think it does. And you answered another question, how um, are the professors? So thanks. Thanks for answering two questions there. Um, this next question is for Liz. What are some traditions that are specific to UC San Diego? That's a great question. There are so many, um, and really it's nice. Uh, so uh, if you guys are familiar with our seven college system, each college is gonna have its own traditions that are specific to that college. Anyone can go and attend these, um, but they're like run by that college. So if you wanna get involved in like the planning, you can do it that way. Uh, my personal favorite is held by my home college, Eleanor Roosevelt, that's Rockin' Roosevelt. It is a um, on-campus concert every year. Uh, my first year we had COIN and that's one of my favorite bands. So that was super exciting for me. Um, we do a lot of concerts on campus, um, which is like super fun and exciting. We have our Sun God Festival in the spring, which has tons of like cool people come. Uh, we weren't able to have it this past year, but my first year we had, um, Joji was one of the headliners. So that was super cool. Um, we also have little events like we have our pumpkin drop for Halloween that's held by Muir College where we drop a huge hollowed out pumpkin full of candy from the tallest building in Muir and then we all fight for the candy. The, uh, similarly, we have the watermelon drop in Ravel, which is same kind of concept except we drop a watermelon off of the top the tallest building in Ravel College and then there's a bunch of free watermelon, not the one that fell on the ground, but like other watermelon. Um, so there's super fun things to do that I think really helps add to the like home feeling of UC San Diego, all these really specific things that like you go into it and like someone might ask you about like one of these things and you have no idea what it is as an outsider's perspective. But then once you're there, you're like, oh yeah, like I do that every year. And it's like your own little like piece of UC San Diego you get to be a part of. Thank you, Liz. And as a follow-up question for you, what is the seven college system? Can you explain that to our attendees today? Yes, of course I can. Um, so UC San Diego has a seven college system. So we have now seven, our uh, most recent college seventh is just opening up now in the fall of 2020. Basically, uh, your college is gonna be like your mini home in the grander home of UC San Diego. Uh, UC San Diego is a very big school, which can be super intimidating going into it. Um, but your college is going to be more the size of like a community college. So it's going to be more like five to 6,000 students compared to over 30,000 in the whole university. Um, it's going to be where you sleep, where you eat. Um, each college has its own um, academic advising, has its own um, traditions, like I was mentioning in the last one. But the only really big difference between all of our colleges is going to be their kind of uh, philosophy, which drives their general education requirements. So each college has uh, different general education requirements, mainly in their writing sequence, which is uh, shaped by their philosophy. For me, I'm in Eleanor Roosevelt College. We are the international scholar, and that's shown through our writing sequence, which is Making of the Modern World, which is a five quarter history sequence. Uh, so those are the only like that's the big difference between all of the colleges none's like better than the other on your application it's going to ask you to rank the colleges one through seven and i would tell you to go out when you're trying to make that choice look at the philosophies look at those general education requirements look at the traditions and just see the college you like envision being your home for the next four years because that's what i did and it worked out great so that's what i recommend Thanks, Liz, and thanks for that advice as well. Okay, next question is for Jalen. What does a normal day look like for a UC San Diego student? Um, so I'll just go based off of what I had my spring quarter at UC, 
San Diego. Basically, I had 8 a.m.s and I actually went to them. So I'd wake up pretty early, go to my 8 a.m.s, go to like a few other classes, if I, like like however many classes I had that day. Um, and then some days I would train or work for like this job. Um, but then other than that, I had like a lot of free time, honestly. So I would usually either just like hang out with my friends or I'd like go get food. I would nap for a long time like or like I would go to any like events that we had um, I'm also in the black student union and in the Viet Vietnamese student association so like we would have little like events going on for those two so I would um, occasionally go to like any meetings that we had or um, any other like cultural events that we had going on too um, and then even within Vietnamese student association I'm also in like the big little program so I have a big and I have like two like siblings it's, it's like basically like your fraternity, like Greek, like Greek, Greek life type of thing. Um, so I would like hang out with them too. But yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of hanging out with people, a lot of napping, a lot of eating. And that's basically it. Sounds like a very well-rounded day. Thanks for sharing. Okay, this next question is for Diane. Um, how was the workload from going from community college to a four-year university? Yeah, that's a great question. So I actually transferred from uh, Ohlone College, which is just a local community college um, in Fremont. And I think the biggest difference is the adjustment from the semester system that my community college was in to the quarter system. So the quarter system is a much faster pace. So it's a 10 weeks of instruction and 11th week for finals. Whereas like for the semester, it's typically what, like 16 weeks. Um, so it's it is a much faster pace and it's a little bit to get used to. Um, so I, I would say that is honestly the biggest difference. In terms of workload, um, I think just in the beginning, especially the faster pace helps, makes it kind of feel like you're doing so much more work. Um, but as you get used to the quarter system, I feel like the adjustment is much easier and it, it doesn't feel as overwhelming. I would say it's typically the same amount of work that I did at community college just at a different, um, just at a different pace. Thanks for sharing, Diane. Okay, this next question is for Rocco. How would you describe taking engineering courses at UC San Diego? Great question. So um, the engineering courses at UC San Diego are really um, theoretical based. Um, and then a lot of the hands-on experience some of it does come through the labs like uh, I know like when I had my material science class we had a really cool lab where we actually like did make some like carbon fiber uh, materials and we were able to like test those properties but a lot of the other classes are mainly theoretical uh, or like theory based and then you get that hands-on experience through clubs that's the biggest recommendation to kind of get the balance between the two uh, so I think I mentioned earlier I was in an organization building well like essentially building a rocket uh, that's one way and there's tons of other clubs like people that build uh, race cars uh, submarines a bunch of like other like too many to name um, but that's how they balance the hands-on and the theory application but taking the engineering courses themselves they can they can be challenging of course like every class has its own difficulties um, but there's a lot of support in place there's a um, newsletter that gets sent out every single week uh, regarding all the engineering updates and they'll let you know of any classes any study groups any like tutoring sessions that have formed and plus in the library in the first floor there's a teaching and learning commons which does provide like free tutoring for students it gives them that extra assistance and a lot of the engineering courses have um like an, an area set up in the teaching and learning common for that particular class so let's say you're taking like thermodynamics or like mechanics or something uh, and you're like hey i'm not getting it uh, you can go and they do offer you those uh, services with another student that has already taken that class, gotten the grade of a B or better, so they know the material and then they're able to pass that on to you. So it does have its own challenges, of course, like any college class does, but there's a lot of support set up for the engineering classes. That's how I would describe the experience, at least. Thanks, Rocco. That was very detailed, so thank you. Okay, this next question is for Liz. What research opportunities are available to students? Yeah, so one of the great things about UC San Diego is there are so many different research opportunities. We're in the top five in funding in the nation for like a research university. Um, I personally got into research my freshman year. Um, I started working for the uh, UC San Diego Medical School 
in their All of Us research program, which is about genetic testing. So that was super cool to get involved in. There's also tons of research outside of the realm of STEM. Like if you're not in science, there's still plenty of research opportunities. And one of the great things, um, as like Rocco was mentioning, we have tons of amazing professors here and you can like create those relationships with them and ask to be a part of their research opportunities. A lot of professors offer them and will like bring up that they are like doing work with labs and you can create that kind of relationship and just not be afraid to be like, hey, your research sounds really interesting. I want to get involved in it. Is it possible? Um, sometimes it won't be, sometimes it will be, just kind of got to put yourself out there. Um, there's also our online um, career center kind of website, Handshake, offers jobs on campus and also research opportunities. That's how I found mine personally. Um, so there will be tons of postings out. Your department will bring it up. And then also if you just do a little bit of like digging on your own and reach out to people and take that initiative, there's always research to be done somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Okay, this next question is for Jalen. Is it easy to travel around campus? Um, I'd say it's like actually really, really easy to travel around campus. We have like multiple ways you can do it. I mean, you could just like walk. Usually it takes me um, about 20 to 30 minutes to get all the way across campus. And I live on like the very opposite side because I'm an ERC. Um, and so it doesn't really take that long. And majority of your classes aren't even going to be like that far usually. Um, we do have like a shuttle system um, and there are stops in each college. So like uh, I had like two stops, um, like two minutes away from my dorm. Um, and they all, we also have like a phone app so that you know when like the shuttle buses are coming. So it's really, really easy to just like leave two minutes before the shuttle comes, hop on the bus and then go to whatever building you have to go to. Um, we also are a wheel friendly campus. So you can bring like your skateboard, your bicycle, someone had a unicycle before so you can bring whatever mode of tra transportation you want to um, and you can get around campus that way uh, we also have like the uh, little scooters and like bicycles you can like rent and i think they're like like less than a dollar for like a minute i think it's like 60 seconds i mean 60 cents or even less i'm not even sure but um yeah a lot of people use those as well especially like if they're late for class so just like zoom on like a, a bike and go go so yeah it's pretty easy thanks Jalen. and as a staff member i can attest this the shuttle system is awesome so make sure you use that when you're on campus okay next question for diane how great is the food very serious question i was hoping to get this question i actually saw it and i was like i i love talking about food um, so I'm going to talk about it. So I actually think the food on campus is fantastic. Um, my favorite place to eat is, well, two favorite places to eat. One is Club Med, which is at the medical school. They actually have like the best sandwiches that you can find on campus. Um, but the other one that is my absolute favorite is the Bistro. So they actually specialize in sushi and Asian fusion food if you're into that. Um, and you can use your dining dollars from your meal plan to pay for this. Um, so the food is fantastic. Um, if you're not into that, like say you have um, food restrictions, for example, let's say, for example, you're vegan, right? Or you can't eat gluten and things like that. There's lots of accommodations in different dining halls on campus where they can accommodate for people who are gluten free or people who, you know, um, are vegan and things like that too. So there's plenty of options um, for you as a student. Like it's not just like, um, I, I think that UC San Diego is pretty thoughtful in the food um, on campus. So I would say anything you could think of, we pretty much have. Um, we even have a gelato bar. So yeah, food is fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. Okay, this next question is for Rocco. How is it balancing a club sport and school itself? Um, I, I mean, it's it all comes down to your personal um, scheduling and like your time management habits. So for me, I don't have uh, any issues with it. Uh, because for me, actually like the club sport is kind of like my free time. It's like my escape, you know, so during the day, uh, during the majority of the day, I'm focused on school. I'm doing my homework, getting all that stuff out of the way. And then when it comes time for practice, when it comes time for the weekends for games, that's kind of like my free time, my escape. And so it is nice. I don't see it as like a chore that's added on or anything like that. 
Uh, so that also helps keep it, keep it light. Uh, and then, like I said, it comes down to time management. So for me, I make sure that I set across or set aside enough time. So like, I know that I have like a big tournament coming up in the weekend. I know that I'm not going to want to do my homework while I'm on the road. Um, so then it, I just do it ahead of time. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple to balance. I definitely recommend getting into like club sports. They're really fun. Uh, cause it's still pretty competitive, but it's a lot more laid back. And another thing, um, it is pretty laid back. So in the, like when I was first starting my first year, I remember like I was trying to balance like the first year of college and I asked my coach, I said, Hey, like I'm freaking out. Like I got a lot of stuff to do. Is it cool if I like miss this, miss the games this weekend? He's like, yeah, sure. Like, no worries. Like get that homework done. So that's another way that you can balance it. Cause they know that we are like, we're students, you know, no one's like trying to go to the MLB from club baseball, but it is, um, it's pretty simple to balance as long as you have good time management. Great, thanks. I think this is going to be a wonderful question for Liz to answer. What is the best part about living in San Diego? Oh, that is a great question. So as somebody who is not native of California, I absolutely love living in San Diego. Like I fly back in two weeks and I'm, I've been counting down the days since I bought my plane ticket to go back. Um, there's so many amazing things, obviously like living super close to the beach is super fun. Um, the weather is amazing because right now in Pennsylvania, it's very hot. Like it's been in the 90s for the last like week, like low hundreds. So it's not fun. Then the winter, it's super cold. And that's no good. Like San Diego's annual temperature is 70 and that's perfect. Like amazing. But I will put in my plug that my favorite thing about living in San Diego has got to be the food. There are so many like different places to get all kinds of different foods. Like if you want to go down to Convoy, there's a bunch of like Asian food and boba places. And that's my favorite place to go on the weekends. There's also like a lot of great Mexican food everywhere. And so many places like super close to campus to just go on little like mini adventures and go get food is a soup. That's how I like to spend my weekends anyway. Like I'll just pick a random restaurant I've never been to before. And I'm like, let's go see if that's any good. And I mean, usually it is sometimes, you know, you get a bad one, but that's okay. It's the adventure that matters. Also, uh, there's seals in La Jolla Cove, and I think that's cool. That's another personal favorite, but definitely, yeah, weather, food, beach, my favorite things about San Diego. <laughs> and the beach is very, very close to campus, so it'll be an easy reach for, for you all who decide to come here. Okay, next question is for Jalen. What advice do you have for first year students applying this fall? Okay, uh, this is actually a good question and it's like very, very fresh in my head since it like just happened. Um, I'd say there's a lot of advice that I can give you, so I'm gonna try to like condense it down. I think one of the major things is to definitely, um, like because UCSD has uh, the college system, I think it's super, super important to know like what um like like what Liz said like what exactly each college system is about and what their like general um educate uh, education requirements are because I feel like that kind of helps you kind of situate what you might be interested in and what you want to do and so for me personally when I was because I picked Eleanor, Eleanor Roosevelt for my uh, first choice and when I was writing like my essays and like answering things I try to build all my um all my answers around like that general, um, like my general theme of like, um, like being interested in like international studies, history, that kind of thing. Uh, so I think it's really important to kind of have like a central theme when you are like writing your essays. Um, and then I also think it's very, very important to um, be on time and organize with everything. I submitted my application on the very, very last day uh, like a couple hours before it was due because I had issues because I had like a volleyball game and then right after it like I had issues like submitting it so like my counselor had to like help me thank god she was at the volleyball game um, so I definitely say to like submit things early if you can and that's like not even for just our school just like any college in general it'll save you so much time like if you guys can start your applications like this upcoming month or like in September I would do it because especially like if you're if it's like your senior year you're gonna have a lot of stuff to do uh you're gonna have like finals just like I don't know like I think senior year for me was just very 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 I had a lot of things to do all the time and so having like the relief of having all, all my college applications already out there uh was just like a big relief off my chest so I would definitely say to be organized with 
like all the colleges you're applying to, uh, be organized with like your essays, have a theme for your essays, all that kind of stuff. Thank you. Okay, this next question is for Diane. How safe is the campus when taking night classes? Do you feel comfortable walking? Yeah, that's a great question. So we actually have a police station that's located on campus. So if anything were to happen, um, the average response time is actually less than two minutes. But specifically, like say, um, like this question was asking, um, if you're like studying really late and you're walking around campus late at night, we actually do have community service officers that can walk you to wherever you need to go. So um, say you're studying at Geisel and it's like midnight and you need to walk back to somewhere on camp where your residence hall um, or apartment on campus and it's kind of far away. You can call the community, community service officer and they will actually walk you to wherever you need to go. Sometimes if you live kind of far, I'm not saying this happens often, but if you live kind of far away from wherever you need to be walked to, they'll take a cart and like drive you there. But again, no guarantees that that happens every single time. Um, but there are those services available to you as a student. Um, and just talking about safety on campus in general, um, again, we do have the police station on campus. We also do have something called a blue light system that operates in kind of like a light. Uh, if you press a blue light, light turns on, the camera starts rolling and the police um, is actually notified um, to wherever location you're at. So it's a pretty safe campus and um, there's, yeah, it's, it's a safe campus. Thanks, Diane. Okay, this next question is for Rocco. How difficult is it how difficult is it to double major? It, de it depends on how you plan it. Um, it's pretty, I had a pretty easy time to kind of like plan the double major because I just reached out right away uh, to the advising. So like when you're a student, you have access to the virtual advising center. And then I messaged them literally in like the first like month or two of school. I started, I was like, hey, uh, I want a double major, like an add-on astrophysics. What do I need to do? And then we worked, we made a four-year plan. Uh, and that's the biggest thing, uh, in my opinion, the biggest challenge is making a four-year plan. So, uh, like, if you have two majors that have a lot of classes, uh, like physics, engineering, there's a lot of classes, trying to balance those and find space for each of those, that's the biggest difficulty. Um, but as long as you get that step, otherwise, it's all on you. And then it's just actually taking the classes and going through with it, uh, which can vary, best, like, based on what your majors are on how, like, difficult it is. Um, but I'd say it's pretty simple, and there was a lot of help along the way. They were really communicating and, like, I even just checked up, like after I already submitted the applications to apply for the double major, I checked in and I was like, hey, just wanted to make sure everything went through. They're like, yes, you're all on top of it. And so I didn't have any challenges actually like with the logistics behind it. Now it's just continuing to take these classes and seeing uh, what the workload's gonna be like. So for my particular double major, I know it's really unique, but like if you wanna double major in two um, classes or two, like, like engineering and physics, it is gonna be a lot of work. So I have to take five classes every quarter, um, but that's okay because I'm, I'm all right with that. I'm, I like having a higher course load. So just keep that in mind. If you don't want to have a big course load, probably not a good idea to double major. But if you're okay with it and you're okay to balance it, uh, I'd say it's worth it because you don't like it's the same price, but you get two majors for the price of one. So add on a couple more classes and you're good to go. But that's my two cents on it. Thank you, Rocco. Okay, this next question is for Liz. What was or is your experience like living on campus? Yeah, so I spent my first two years living on campus. You do have that two-year housing guarantee coming in either as a first year or as a transfer. Uh, your first year housing is going to be a suite style system. So it's going to be any combination of like, I'd say eight to 18 people living in uh, triples, doubles, singles, I think they're getting away with, they're getting rid of triples for like the upcoming years. So I don't know how true that's gonna be in the future. Um, and then, so for me, there was 17 of us total living in a suite. We had a common room and a bathroom that we all shared. So there was five triples. I lived in one of those and then two singles. Bathroom has like three toilets, three showers, four sinks. It takes a little bit of maneuvering at first, but you get used to it really quickly and I never had any major issues with it. Um, I really enjoyed living on campus my first year especially because it was how I made some of my first friends like my two roommates are still like two of my closest friends in California. Um, 
and it just got me involved in a lot of things. I was never far away from like events that were happening on campus. Like I could just get up and go and didn't have to really like plan around like when I had to like get home. I didn't have to worry about uh, where I was gonna park my car because I didn't have one. So that was all good. And then my second year, those uh, that living situation is more apartment style. So there's gonna be anywhere from like four to eight people living together. I lived in an apartment with three other girls. So we all lived in singles. And then we had our own kitchen, we had our own like bathroom, and that was definitely like a different experience, but also a really good one too. I still had that feeling of being on campus, but I was like starting to move up in the like more like responsible for myself, like cooking for myself. And now that I've moved off campus into my like own apartment, I feel ready to do that. Um, so I definitely do recommend living on campus. I really enjoyed it. You obviously, you don't have to. We have no requirement that you live on campus at any point throughout your uh, four or two years here. Um, but if it is something you're interested in, I definitely think it's worthwhile. I think it's a great way to meet people, a great way to get involved. Um, but you can still get all of those experiences if you don't live on campus. Great, thanks Liz. Okay, this next question is specific for you, Jalen. Um, why did you choose political science and how are you enjoying the program so far? Um, so it's a little random why I chose it. So one of the essays I wrote when I was applying to the college was basically about how one of my best qualities was that I could argue very well and I like arguing and I like challenging people. And so when I was coming into UCC and I was trying to think like, okay, like what career am I gonna end up doing? Like, like I, need a, I need to have a major and like have a plan because I'm spending all of this money to go out of state. So I need to do something with my future. And so I was like, oh, let me be a lawyer. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll just be a lawyer. And so um, I really like politics. And so I was like, okay, like I'll just do political science law. I'll learn a little bit about like the law side of politics. Um, and so that's basically why I chose it. But I generally like, like politics in general um, and I like being up to date on current events and like the social and political climate, especially now. Um, and so I think that's just like a personal, um, a personal hobby, I guess you could say of mine, your personal interest. Um, and so far I've only taken two classes um, in, within the program and they're both online, but even though they're online, I think it was generally like very, very, very interesting and I really, really liked it. And I'm super, super excited um, for this upcoming fall because I have two classes uh, that are in the program. One is uh, law and sex, and then the other one is politics of multiculturalism. Oh, and I also have a psychology and law class as well that I'm going to be in too. So yes, I think overall though, the program so far, even though like, I've only had online classes for it, is really, really good and it's really interesting and fun and the professors really know what they're talking about and they really know how to explain um, the basics of politics very well as well. Thanks Jalen. Those classes sound very interesting and while we're talking about classes um, this next question is for Diane. How easy is it to take classes outside of your major across different departments and what's been your favorite class? Yeah that's actually a great question. So how I ended up minoring in psychology was because I actually had a friend who wanted me to take a psychology class with him. And so I was like, well, sure, why not? So I had planned to just take this one random psychology course. It was actually an eating disorders course. And I thought it was super, super interesting. And uh, the following quarter, I ended up just taking another psychology course. And then I realized like, hey, why not just minor in psychology? Because I love psychology so much. Um, so I would say it's pretty easy to take classes outside your, of your major um, in the sense that like if you're interested in something and you have room for it in your academic plan, you can totally just go for it and see where it takes you. Um, Cause that's just, I'm, for me, that's how it worked out. And yeah, it, it worked out pretty well, I would say. Thanks, Diane. Okay, next question is for Rocco. Can you talk a little bit about the Career Center and if you've had any experience attending a career fair and what that was like? 
So I personally have not been to a career fair yet, um, but I can talk about the career center itself. Uh, when I first like came to UC San Diego, I checked it out and I was like, hey, like, what do they have to offer? Because um, I was thinking about balancing a bunch of careers, and this was before I had like actually officially decided to double major. I was considering going into physics for maybe being becoming a professor. So I set up a, a meeting for like with one of the advisors, and I asked them. I said, hey, like, what does it take to become like a physics professor? Like, that's a career that I might be interested in. Uh, and they were super helpful. They sat me down. They're like, all right. So they looked up a bunch of the data on it, um, like how many like alumni we have from UC San Diego, what kind of paths that they took to become professors. Uh, and like what the different requirements are, but then besides like just that particular career, they also opened other options and like what could grad school mean for me. Uh, and then so I was like, all right, and I started getting more serious about grad school and it really helped open my eyes and give me a lot of an alternative perspective that me as like a kid who was like a couple months out of high school, uh, I had no idea what any of this stuff meant. So going to the Career Center really helped because they were professionals, like that is their job to help us find jobs. Um, and so I could say great things about the career fair. In addition to that, I think someone mentioned Handshake earlier, but that's an online portal for finding jobs, not just on campus, uh, but also off campus. So if you sign up, you make an account for there, you can put in like some of your preferences, like what your majors are. And then I always get emails from them about like, hey, like there's this engineering internship coming up, like apply through Handshake. And that's also how I found this particular job as a campus ambassador. Uh, so that's really helpful as well. So you find jobs on campus. Uh, and like there's a bunch of weird ones I remember looking there was one to be an intramural dodgeball referee so you can have a bunch of like fun positions to apply to and also serious ones as well so the career center is really helpful really accessible and then career fairs I'm sure they're great I haven't been to one yet but I know of my friends they've been to there and they've like submitted resumes and talked to the employers like day of so it's pretty cool Thanks, Rocco. Have any of the panelists been to a career fair or have anything to add about the career? Okay, no problem. We'll move on to the next question. Um, this is a, sp a question specific for Liz. Can you talk more about the biological anthropology program minor? Absolutely. I love the biological anthropology department. I really do. I stumbled like upon it because I was taking a class for my major that was actually in biological anthropology. And then I took that and I was like, wow, this class is awesome. And I wanted to take more. Uh, basically the basic rundown. Um, so biological anthropology falls under the anthropology department as a whole. Uh, if you want to declare a minor in anthropology, you either do biological, um, archaeological, or sociocultural. Uh, no matter which one you choose, you can take classes across all three disciplines. I've taken classes in all three. You just need to take four of your seven required uh, minor courses in the one you want to specialize in. So for me, I have to take four specifically biological anthropology classes. But I mean, I took um, underwater archaeology to fulfill part of my minor requirement, and that was super cool. Don't know if I'll ever do anything with it, but it was super fun. Um, the professors I've encountered with biological anthropology are great. They're super hands-on. My first biological anthropology professor, he and I, like, we're super close now because I sat in the front row of his class every single day, and he always wanted to get people involved. It was the um, evolution of sex and sexuality, so that was a very interesting topic for a bunch of college students to discuss and a lot of like in-depth looking at different cultures and like how we've gotten to where we are now. Um, it's, I also like it because it's a nice bridge between like traditional science classes and then more like applying it to the world around you. So yeah, we did need to know like some like biological processes and like some more like sciencey stuff, but then it was like, okay, how does that apply to like the average person? Like why should the average person have this kind of information? Uh, so if it's something you're interested in, I definitely recommend it 100%. You can go on their website and see a lot of information about like different professors and different classes that they offer. Um, I'm taking another class. I'm taking evolution of the human diet with the same professor I had for evolution of sexuality. So um, they're super interesting, super like wide variety of courses fall under there and I definitely recommend it. Thank you. We just received a question that's specific for Jay Lin. So how is your minor in Korean studies? Um, so for now, I think it's really, really fun. Um, so because I'm in Eleanor Roosevelt College, I am required to take a language. And in high school, I wasn't very good at Spanish. So I was like, okay, like, let's just go a completely different route and pick like 
a different language. So I picked, I ended up picking Korean and I'm about to take my last quarter of Korean um, next, next quarter in the fall. Um, and I think I've had the same TA throughout the entire, uh, the entire like Korean language course. Um, and so my class in itself is only like 20, uh, 20 other students and it's taught by my TA. So we, it's re I feel like it's really, really easy to learn Korean and just learn more about the culture because it's like such a small environment. And like, she knows my name. She like jokes with me. If she sees me on campus, like she'll talk to me and stuff like that. So I think the program like is very, very um, like, I like it a lot more than um, other ones in that way, just because it's so small. Um, but for now though, I haven't taken any other courses outside of the language courses, um, but I heard that they are good though. Uh, there's like a lot of like different variety of varieties of the courses too. So I could take like a politics um, class for Korean. And so I can knock out both a course for my minor and for my major. So I think in those ways where they kind of overlap, it's also very, very helpful as well. Awesome, thank you. Okay, next question is for Diane. What's something special that stands out about UC San Diego? That's a great question. I would say something special that stands out is really the people. Um, I, I know I mentioned this a little bit earlier, like the people at UC San Diego are just amazing. You know, um, I've never met people that have been so kind and so open to talk to you about you know, like anything. Um, I, there's a lot of support on campus that I feel like made my whole entire experience at UC San Diego. And um, yeah, like other than that though, if you're thinking like physical things that like stands out at UC San Diego, we actually have the Stewart Art Collection. Um, you can find a map of it online, but it's just a bunch of different art installations that are across the whole entire campus that you can view. You can visit some of them, like physically go in um, a couple of them. Like for example, the Fallen Star is one of my personal favorites from the Stu Art Collection. But yeah, I would say like those, the people as well as like the Stuart Art Collection stands out the most at UC San Diego. Thank you, Diane. Okay, next question is for Rocco. Since we can't go visit campus right now, can you describe the campus environment and what's your favorite spot on campus? So my favorite spot on campus uh, is in this, cool kid behind me, Geyser Library. Uh, Geyser Library, sixth floor is the best view uh, overlooking Warren Mall. It's beautiful. Uh, it's like, that's where I like to study because, you know, like I'm studying, I'm working hard and I look up and I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. I see Fallen Star, which um, like was just described. It's a big blue house on top of the building, which is really funky. Uh, and that's like my personal favorite area on campus. But uh, as for the campus itself, I say it's pretty uh, energetic, it's busy. That's for sure, because there's, like I mentioned earlier, like 30,000 undergraduate students all trying to find their way across. It's a big campus, but there's a lot of people uh, all the time, especially if you go to Library Walk, which is like our main pathway, connects our big geyser library to our other biomedical library. Uh, there's always going to be um, people there recruiting for clubs, trying to sell you goodies, be like, hey, buy a donut, support my club. Um, and then that's, that's kind of like one of the main attractions of campus as well. But other than that, I'd say it's pretty fun. There's always people like doing, there's always something going on, whether it's a free food event, whether it's like a sporting event, whether it's like a one of the free concerts, there's always something going on on our campus that you can go to. And there's also like a Facebook group. I know Facebook is kind of like irrelevant, but like once you get to college, it, it actually becomes something. Uh, and so there's like Facebook groups for like people posting all of their events, like, hey, like I'm planning this event for my club. Like there's this festival going on. There's this free food here. Uh, so if you'd like join one of those groups, you'll never be without something to do. Thanks, Rocco. Okay, next question is for Liz. Is it easy to declare or drop minors? Yeah, so in my personal experience, declaring a major is actually like super easy. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go on to your Triton link and then you just kind of go and you click like add, add minor and you go and it'll ask you like what you want to minor in. And then for me, it asked like, what courses I was planning on taking to fulfill my minor and if I had taken any already, but you don't have to stick to that plan. It's just to like show that you've thought about it. Um, so it's pretty easy on like paper to get it added, 
Um, and as far as like incorporating it into your life and your schedule, um, depending on what it is, it's going to be like easier or harder. Um, for me, it lined up a lot. Uh, like two of my major classes are allowed to overlap with my minor. So I only have to take five classes compared to seven. Um, it takes like some planning if you want to do stuff that's like completely separate from what you're majoring in, but it's definitely still possible. And then as far as dropping it, um, yeah, you basically kind of same deal. You just go in and decide you don't want to do it anymore and you can drop it. Um, I had a friend who went from like, he came in with just a major, was then a double major with a minor, and then was a double major with a triple minor, and then backed it up and is now a solo major, solo minor. Um, so he kind of went through that and added and took them back a couple of times. Um, so I would definitely like think about it before you do it. Like I wouldn't fall back on the, oh, well, if I don't want to do it, I can just like get rid of it. Like definitely think about whether or not it's something you want to put the time and effort into. But if you just like change your mind halfway through, that's still totally fine and allowed. Great, thank you. Okay, question for Jalen. What clubs would you recommend joining? And can you talk about the different student organizations that are available to students? Okay, um, in terms of recommendations, I'd say it just depends on what you're interested in. I feel like like uh, UCSD has a large amount of clubs already on campus. And even if like, say you don't find a club that you um, want, like say that we don't have a club, um, and something that you're interested in or a hobby that you have, you're able to uh, take you and two other people and create uh, your own club. And so there's like those types of options as well. I think generally speaking though, we have clubs in like almost everything. We have like a lettuce club where like all they do is basically like eat a head of lettuce uh, one time a year and whoever can do it the fastest is the next president for the following year. Um, and so we have a lot of random clubs, but uh, my the two that I'm in are both um, social clubs, I guess you could say. I'm in the Black Student Union and the, the Vietnamese Student Association, which I already mentioned. Um, and so personally, I would recommend if you have um, a culture or ethnicity that you align with, I would say to definitely go out and join those clubs. I feel like when you're a first year, especially, if you're able to join a club with people that look like you or have shared experiences as you, it makes it makes assimilating into the campus and into the college and to like just the new environment in general a lot easier. So when I joined like the Black Student Union and I saw a lot of other like black students um, there at like the meetings and events and stuff like that, it made me feel a lot more comfortable and I could easily like talk to them on our shared experiences and like make friends with them and stuff like that. So I think um, cultural clubs and like social clubs are really good in terms of making friends um, if you have like any other hobbies though, um, like say for me, I'm into volleyball. So while I didn't join a volleyball club in itself, I also like I went to um, like some of the practices that they had, like the random open gyms that they had. And so while it's not like a club per se, there were people that regularly went. So I met people from there that um, also enjoyed the same sport that I did so I can meet them. And we would like Snapchat and be like, hey, do you wanna go out and play volleyball? Like, let's go to the ERC green and like go like pepper a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, I think generally speaking, uh, just depending on what type of hobbies you have, uh, like go into those clubs. But overall though, I think the cultural and social clubs are really, really good for like meeting people, learning new cultures and stuff like that. Awesome, thank you. It looks like we have time for just one more question and I think this is a great question to end with. Um, so it will be to you, Diane. Um, what's your best piece of advice for the overall college experience? Yeah, so your college experience is completely what you make of it. Um, don't be afraid to be out of your comfort zone and take advantage of all the opportunities that are presented to you. Um, try new things. You know, it's, it, I think it's a great opportunity to explore things that you may be interested in or maybe you've never tried um, out before. And, you know, I, I know it's hard to not be shy, but, you know, people are really friendly and maybe you can meet like really great friends throughout the whole entire process. So don't be afraid. And yeah, this, this whole, whole entire experience is going to be what you make of it. Thanks, Diane. That was great. Um, so 
This is the end of our webinar. I just want to give a huge virtual round of applause to our panelists today. Thank you so much for sharing all of those great answers and your experience um, regarding campus. So thanks so much for that. Just a few little reminders before we close out. Um, if you do have specific admissions questions, we do have a few ways um, that you can contact us. So we have our website, admissions.ucsd.edu on the screen. It provides some great information for all of you. We have a wonderful FAQ page. So if you have any, any questions, it's probably on our website. Um, but if you can't find it on our website for whatever reason, feel free to email us at admissionsreply at ucsd.edu. Um, we also are offering virtual advising appointments. So if you would like to meet one-on-one -on -one with an admissions officer, you can do so by following the link on the screen. I'll read it um, just in case. It's admissions.ucsd.edu slash virtual advising. And lastly, this was one of our Triton Talk webinars. We have Triton Talk webinars weekly. Um, if you want to sign up for another webinar, please feel free to visit the link admissions.ucsd.edu slash Triton Talks. We have many wonderful things that we'd like to share with you. So thanks for your time this morning. Um, again, from the West Coast, I hope everyone had a wonderful rest of their day and a great weekend. Bye, everybody.